place is New York City. A young lab assistant is working late into the night. He's trying to open a particularly stubborn container of concentrated ammonia when disaster strikes. The pressure inside the bottle sends the ammonia spraying up into his face and his eyes. The caustic liquid burns with pain and his vision fails him. But inside of him, something else is happening. His body begins to release adrenaline, causing it to enter its fight or flight response. His heart rate goes up. Blood sugar levels begin to elevate. Blood flow to his muscles increases, giving him the burst of strength needed to fight off or run from this external threat. Everything in his body is now working towards a common goal, survival. Of course, this threat is neither human nor animal. There's nothing to fight off, and it's too late to flee. Instead, he is hospitalized in Bellevue, where he eventually recovers. Scarred, but alive, he's out of harm's way. But what happened to the adrenaline that was released into his body? The neurotransmitter is no longer pushing his heart rate through the roof or giving him an unnatural burst of strength. Is it gone? And if so, where did it go? This is the story of the CUNY graduate who became a Nobel laureate and the discovery of reuptake. No, this isn't an image of a James Bond villain. No, it isn't, is it? No. Julius Axelrod's accident left him permanently blind in one eye, resulting in a unique choice of fashion. Born in 1912, Julius Axelrod was only 17 when the Great Depression hit New York City. Yet the stock market crash of 1929 was not nearly enough to dissuade young Julius from pursuing his dreams. That same year, he decided to try his luck at New York University in the hopes of later attending medical school. However, after a year of financial struggles, his money finally ran out and he decided to transfer to the tuition-free City College. Far more affordable to low-income students and open to those whom other schools discriminated against, the proletarian Harvard, as it was known at the time, proved to be a perfect fit for the child of Jewish immigrants. Inconveniently enough, the college was also known as the Harvard on the Hudson, and getting to it from the Lower East Side took a very long time. <laughs> However, young Julius remained positive. I did most of my studying during the subway trip to and from Uptown City College. Studying in a crowded, noisy New York subway gave me considerable powers of concentration. After spending four years at the City College and graduating with a degree in biology, he started working at the laboratory of industrial hygiene, where he helped devise methods for measuring vitamins in food. In 1946, after the lab received a grant to perform a study on painkillers, Axelrod was asked to consult Dr. Bernard Brody about his research on analgesics. The following encounter had a major impact on Axelrod's career. Working in Brody's laboratory at the Goldwater Memorial Hospital, Axelrod took part in the study of a commonly known analgesic called acetanilide. Their groundbreaking study led to the discovery of acetaminophen, more commonly known under the brand name Tylenol. This chemical compound became one of the most widely used painkillers in the world. During the next six years, Axelrod performed countless experiments and research studies and established himself as one of the leading authorities in the field of biochemical research. In 1952, Axelrod left Brody's team and joined National Institutes of Health, where he started his pioneering research on psychedelic drugs. It was this dive into the world of mind-altering chemicals that made him take notice when hearing of a theory that schizophrenia could be caused by an abnormal metabolism of epinephrine. Better known as adrenaline, this neurotransmitter has traditionally been studied as the hormone involved in regulating visceral functions of the body. 
Once released into the bloodstream, the so-called survival hormone acts as a chemical mediator by conveying the nerve impulses to various organs and plays a major role in the fight or flight response. The theory that adrenaline could be responsible for mental illnesses was compelling to Axelrod, but he was surprised to discover that scientists at the time knew very little about how adrenaline was metabolized. After a series of experiments and a number of disproven theories, Axelrod finally found his enzyme, catechol or methyltransferase, also known by its more convenient acronym, COMT. But something didn't add up. Even though COMT broke down adrenaline in the body, Experiments showed that the effects of adrenaline in animals would disappear over time, with or without the presence of COMT. So what was happening to the adrenaline? After tracking radio-labeled adrenaline in cats, Axelrod was surprised to find out that the excess of the chemical was being reabsorbed by sympathetic nerves and stored in their hearts, spleens, and other organs for later use. When those same nerves were stimulated, the neurotransmitter was again released and its effects returned. The sympathetic nerves were acting as a kind of neurotransmitter bank, where adrenaline and other chemicals could be stored until needed. Axelrod had discovered the biological process now known as reuptake. The discovery of reuptake had many immediate applications. Since mental illnesses often involved an impaired regulation of neurotransmitters like adrenaline, Axelrod's discovery of reuptake revolutionized the treatment of diseases such as Parkinson's and schizophrenia. It laid the groundwork for the development of reuptake drugs such as Prozac and Sarafin, which are commonly used for the treatment of depression and anxiety disorders. In 1970, Julius Axelrod received a Nobel Prize in Psychology and Medicine for his discoveries concerning the humoral transmitters in the nerve terminals and the mechanism for their storage, release, and inactivation. Back in Bellevue Hospital as a young lab assistant, Julius Axelrod's sympathetic nervous system is reabsorbing the adrenaline his body had released in the accident. As the hormone leaves his bloodstream, his heart rate slows to a normal speed and his breathing relaxes. His body is undergoing the process of reuptake, the discovery of which will earn him his Nobel Prize 30 years later. The adrenaline now sits in wait for the next bout of excitement. And in spite of everything, Julius is eager to get back to his lab because the next time his heart rate goes up, it may be in the thrill of discovery. <laughs>